If you want to continue to follow our adventure, click subscribe. So you don't miss anything, click the bell notification. Hello, Lost in the Road subscribers and followers. Well, here it is, mid-September, and I don't know, the temperature was 93 degrees. So I think it's a really good time to talk about winter. <laughs> Yeah, it is actually a really good time to talk about winter. I mean, here, it's, uh, we're going to be coming in October here shortly and, and you know, fall time and the temperatures are going to start dropping. And as I have said, we, uh, we are here in Missouri. Carolyn's daughter has uh, cancer. And so we're going to have to stay with her until she passes. Well, and that's going to take us well into February. Now, last year, we uh, stayed in our pop-up camper here to, you know, so we could take her back and forth to get her chemo treatments. And we got down to 12 degrees, but we left in December. Well, January is actually going to be worse than, than December here in Missouri. And, and February might actually be, you know, just as bad as January. So I really need to start thinking about how we are going to survive the winter in, in the truck camper. Now, I think we're going to be able to do a lot better in the truck camper than we are was in the, in the pop-up. I mean, the pop-up did really well, 12 degrees. And at 12 degrees, we had a... A electric heater a little ceramic electric heater and there was times that we would turn on the propane heater but not very often the electric heater for the most part did the, did the job pretty well well we're just not gonna have it this time we're not gonna have the electric heater that means we're just going to have propane well propane has some safety risk obviously a lot of people are worried about carbon monoxide I think that the camper is ventilated well well enough that we, I don't have to worry about carbon monoxide I don't think that I'm going to trust it right away running propane at night. So we're going to have to test it out. We're going to have to just see how long we can go. Do we start, you know, the carbon monoxide uh, detector is going to be in there. And we'll just see if it goes off. If it goes off, then we know we can't run it at night. The other thing we can do is we can leave a window open. The thing is, last year we had a Mr. Heater Portable Buddy and it worked great in the pop-up in this camper I don't think we have the room for it what we're gonna do is we're gonna run our little Coleman stove to heat the camper I am sure a lot of people are gonna find a lot of reason to have object about that but I think the primary reason anybody would object is the, is the carbon monoxide which I am completely aware it could be a problem so this is exactly why I'm telling you is if you do have to stay in your camper in the winter time you're going to have to watch out for the carbon monoxide it's just something you're gonna have to do and you're gonna to have to take every precaution to make sure that works. And so you have to weigh out, how cold is it? How much heat do I need? I mean, if you're down to zero degrees and you need heat, you're going to end up turning on the heater. It's just inevitable. You cannot avoid it. You gotta have the carbon monoxide detector on and you gotta have backup plants. Are you gonna open the window? Are you gonna run a fan to get that, that out, you know, the carbon monoxide out Are you, so you can run it? Now, even the Mr. Heater Portable Buddy says you can run it in a closed, area like an RV but you had to have a certain dimension I don't remember what that was and I don't have one anymore to reference it but you had to have a certain amount of ventilation in the camper well with our window fully open we won't have any problems with that now a lot of people have asked me already why don't we do some mooch docking we just can't really afford it I mean we don't want to get into our emergency fund this time last year we spent a fortune on an emergency fund taking back back and forth and spending money on campsites and mooch docking. Well, when he mooch docking was like we rented. I mean, we spent $150 just for, you know, electric. The truck is insulated. It has an R3 value factor. It's not a lot, but I'm telling you that R3 really makes a big difference in such a small spot. We have been down into the 40s already, and the refrigerator and our body heat can actually heat it up to about 60 degrees all by itself. We turn on the, the heater a little bit in the morning and nearly roast us out. So it's not gonna take a lot of heat and a lot of propane to heat it. Turn that heater, the, the, the stove way down. I do have a bit of a concern of getting down into a campground and it snow a lot, won't be able to get out. You know, our truck's two wheel drive and I'm sure that they're not gonna maintain these, you know, country roads, these conservation areas and everything. So we will have to wait until the snow melts or we're gonna try, I'm gonna try to keep a real close eye on the weather and if necessary, come into town right before it snows. That way we don't get stuck down in there. One of the concerns I have is I did not design the roof of the camper to hold a lot of weight. I was trying to keep the weight down so I didn't want to use a lot of materials. So I have two by twos running 
83 inches across for the roof. It's not enough structural integrity to hold it. I, I, you know, I don't even get up there to walk around because it, it really does start to bow pretty bad. But it was okay as long as we weren't going to be walking on it, was my thinking. I never expected to have to be in a climate where I knew it was going to snow pretty heavily. Or at least had the potential to snow pretty heavily. I just never planned on doing it. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to strengthen that up. I, I'm going to have to get a 2x4 and run a cross beam in the center to hold that up a little higher. Now, well, of course, that is a huge disadvantage because that two inches makes a huge difference on, on head height. Right now, I'm already dragging the top of the, the camper with my hair. That two inches, so now I'm going to be stooping down. I know that's not a big deal and it's ridiculous, but all these things become a factor on uh, everything. You know, we're going to add a little bit more weight. We're going to reduce the functionality of the camper. The shower is going to be more constrictive, everything. Now, showers, that's the big thing. Last year, we did take showers outside in the shower tent you know in very cold weather i don't think it was 12 degrees but i do think we took a shower in like 35 degrees this year won't be a big deal we can take a shower inside the camper uh, the problem is we won't be able to run the heater while we're showering so i think if we just hurried along and we we, if we got a shower taken that i don't think that the camper would get that cold uh, while we're showering if we get down into the zeros and that kind of temperature the one thing i do have a little bit of concern about is the floor of the camper the the, the truck bed is the floor of the camper so essentially what the camper is it's a camper shell it sits right on the rails of the truck so and the floor is 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 the truck bed we have a rubber mat on it i think that rubber mat is going to keep that heat down also re recognize when we take a shower the water runs right down onto that floor if it is too cold and the, and the water sits on that floor i am concerned that that is going to freeze up up underneath there underneath the bed i may have to end up trying to figure out how to heat that floor up a little bit i don't want to have a lot of ice weight on the back of the truck while we're traveling thanks for watching be sure to subscribe click like if you like the video and happy travels